What? Good YouTube, and welcome to the house. Let's talk about the absolute madhouse that has been Power of the Elements pre-sales, the dramas, the controversies, part two, because that always goes so well on YouTube. Yu-Gi-Oh! Daily put up their pre-sales yesterday, and why I didn't do a video shout-out on that? They hit me up like 17 minutes after it was up, saying they didn't even have a chance to message me, the site was getting slammed, they were looking at the craziness, and it was already gone. Their massive stock, and it was priced slightly higher on a lot of things if you compare with gamers choice as well as tier zero they saw them go first they saw them completely go out of product they wanted to try to keep some things up instead it went even faster there's some real FOMO going on with this set and I don't blame people when we start to look at TCG player pre-sales. Now, they know all the big boys are out of the way, and that's the lowest Sprite Blue right now. $104. When I say TCG player pre-sellers are greedy, such as I did before, this is definitely led with greed, trying to play into the hype, into the FOMO, into all these different aspects. And I don't think this will be a triple digit card. A couple of people did say they thought it would be up there, but competition really begins week one of this set being out. And these pre-sellers knowing that they don't have that competition while tier zero is doing some restocks, keep up with them on Twitter to try to snipe those. Realistically, this is what happens when they know they're out of the way. And this is just sick, disgusting. Looking back, at, you know, the Tier Lament Field spell. It's up towards 6.9 not so nice dollars, quickly 80. And people are biting down on these prices and gladly spending their money. Heck, even the Sprite Blue, two of those play sets at 300, absolutely disgusting, right? And it's happening over here even more interestingly. DPE Starlight Rare, there were multiple sellers at 400 before, only one sold at that $400 mark. And then all of these pre sellers up their price hoping for even more instead of saying well maybe maybe other people will go at that 400 right so either people pulled or just upped the price on this card and i don't think dpe is it it's past its prime we don't have verity you need a ban list in order to sell maybe people are speculating on that a bit i know it's a max rarity hero but this is the absolute disgustingness here so let's talk about a bit of the drama right people are saying i'm sponsored bias that i shouldn't uh, bite the hand that feeds me what's up over there oh it's tcg player on the banner that I'm saying that they need to fix their system first off. Second off, when the vendors did up their prices once again, it's in order to try to keep a little bit of stock, not just to try to make more money. The thing is, I have more insight with vendors because I talk about business. I've actually wanted to be a store before. I've known the difference between leading people to dead traffic, which is why I wasn't able to shout out these pre-sales yesterday because it was already gone by the time I would have done so, right? So looking through everything right now, Power of the Elements has unprecedented hype. I've compared it to DUEA, and I seem to be really hitting the mark that people feel that way about the set right now during the pre-sale moments. Also, I'd like to say that I do think that there is a solution to the system. Here's mine, and that's at my own detriment, right? A ton of people have TCG player links in their description down below, costing them nothing extra to support the channel directly for the cards they'd already be buying if you're clicking it, which has been my biggest sponsor payment some months by the way. When it comes down to this, I think it benefits everybody. It's better competition for the whole community. I think my overall sales rates go up if there's more competition, rather than trying to make money on upped sales. Whenever more people are able to buy, everybody wins, right? That's the good news. So what I think is a solution for TCG Player, if you're listening to this video right now, is enable a lower feedback rating, maybe 500 or something for pre-sales, and implement a three-strike system per year. If there's three pre-sales that just didn't ship, that were canceled ahead of time on the end of the seller, then you are able to take them out of the pre-sale program. So make an entire program for pre-sales. It'll open up the door, make a strike system, lower the feedback needs, Needed because I get you're in a rock in a hard place. You don't want canceled orders. You don't want vendors slipping through and, and trying to do that thing where they're not going to fulfill if the price rises up like this either, right? So you want to hold your pre-sellers reliable and keep them there. But this... This isn't the answer, and I would love to see more up competition like happened early with, who was it, Project CCG? Now I remember that guy's name, right? Like, 
whenever it comes down to these different sorts of, of just insane cash grab pre-sales, it's bad for the system, you're not getting a sales rates. Heck, I know that individually Gamer's Choice has sold more total copies of, of certain cards than they have with, say, uh, DPE, for example. I think they've sold more total than have sold on the site, absolutely. And at a similar price when they were 200 right? But we'll see how prices fall out. We'll see how history actually makes its mark down the road. But yeah, I'm not sponsored biased. If you didn't know, how I get paid is one code what's good five for five percent off and to support the channel directly is used. I get paid. I do not take advertising costs. I do not have that kind of incentive to put the sponsor first. And if you listen during pre-sales, I say what I would hold off on, what I don't think is currently a good buy, but people just see the site sell out and go, man, John sold them out of stuff. They try to do the correlation there instead of listening to my actual words. So I get paid when you guys use the code, meaning I'm directly paid by you and you only while the site does end up giving me the money it does come directly from you and that is how i am paid i'm allowed to say whatever i want when pre-sales are on the screen i have a sponsor right here telling them that they have a problem that needs fixing and i always try to put my community first with that i stopped vending around abc format in order to take away bias out of me by selling and trading cards within the segment because i knew the segment one day would be able to be my living and at that point it was teetering towards being that way and now luckily it's very much so is but i still turn down sponsors that don't bring anything to my audience and i'm super blessed to be in a point where i can do that at my channel size because i'm one of the first sponsors well first channels that started working with sponsorships within the community so thank you for those that do understand i know they're still going to be pointing oh he makes money from them he must be biased but realistically I only make money when you spend, and if I cut off, let, let's give a different correlation for those that need the greed parts, right? If I cut off the chicken that lays the golden egg, aka the audience, then what happens? I don't get any more golden eggs. So if I continue to give bad advice, are people going to come back and use that code? Are they going to continue to see bad results and come back to the channel and use the code? Absolutely not. They would not. And that is how I intend to continue. And in fact, I have a funny one right now. I just don't miss, right? This is a bit of a meme, but Donna Majesty was my, like, top bad call in the last year when I said I felt like the sealed was good for some reason and if you held on you're actually winning somehow at this point and I don't understand because lightning underdrive isn't doing this all right lightning overdrive boxes are still uh cheaper and down bottomed out yeah you can get them at 55 but Donna Majesty despite having that stardust inside and not too much else crazy going for it maybe it was ripped open for them a loop it, it currently doesn't just have anything going for it you're winning on this now i said i felt something about it but sometimes i'm right for the wrong reasons as well don fan favorite really hype turned out bad early and then turned out good and then turned out bad again while it's good sometimes the market just doesn't go where you're going to go and if somebody pretends they have all of the answers they're lying to you, but not a financial advisor channel specifically for these reasons. I don't know the future of where things will go, specifically how they will go, and sometimes it's just dumb luck. But yeah, let's go through here real quick. Ultimate Slayer is actually down competitively towards where other pre-sellers had it, around 60, a ton of people thinking this is the card that would carry the set, and I understand with it going down, people are looking to pump another Starlight. This is direct pumping. There was one sale at 400. There were multiple listers. Now those listers are gone. This is pumping on the market do not buy into it in my opinion martha also has gone up in a lot of places versus the earlier pre-sales again i think exo sisters had that moment where you had tier zero spite in the ocg and it was a great counter punch to it i don't think you'll have the same exact result in the tcg but i do think you'll see it top some regionals now Speaking of sponsors, perfect time to go in, right? Code What's Good 5 for 5% off and to support the channel directly over at Big 3. They still have the Rainbow Crystal Beast uh, Structure Decks up, although we don't know how that's going to be good, right? Like, hopefully they put in a lot of those cards like Dimension Shifter in there and they translate from the OCG. But the big news today is the Dark World Structure Deck, which is a Structure Deck, hurrah, it's not being chopped up into a product, is over up for pre-sales on their website. A lot of people have been asking 
asking me where to get that. I've even got some DMs of people saying, hey, John, where do I find the Dark World structures? They are up on big three deals. Code the What's Good 5 for 5% off and to support the channel directly and check out their other products they do have up. Like, so far, we haven't had a Battles of Legends miss yet. Will this be the one? Probably not, but we'll see how it goes and if that Starlight Blue Eyes translates over and if it is enough. And not a lot of places have Megatons left up either, right? Achoo, achoo, oh, sorry, allergic to gold rares. We see that Primathbeck, Alan Bershin, as well as Lapalation are pennies on the dollars comparatively to the $18 and $45 that are their secret rares. Mathbeck is getting a lot of hype. The stuff is getting here. People have been playing it as a rogue deck for a long time. And you also see see that the trap card has spiked up super heavily up towards nine ten dollars chris lofton pro he won with albaz first he has come up with a combo that he's been showcasing with ito the supreme magical force and i know that the facebook groups have also been labbing that he's definitely given popularity to it though and with that showcase it has spiked up heavily is this finally the time ito does it i ask for the 50th time it just might actually be it in terms of people going and giving that break in order to play and work with it etc and you even see a sale at $85 now where during the Nat season it was 30 through 50 it was already on buyout mode so be aware this was up going into this buyout on one of its cycles but here it is really really spiking and now being backed by some top in the pros dark the starlight charmer this is one that I did tell you to get sooner than later even though it doesn't have the waifu tax that fits into the collectibles of charmers the charmer line continuing with uh, Usa here in Pote, but uh, as a starlight uh, towards 500 freaking dollars at this point and then 600 with people actually chomping down near that 475 here but most sales are around the 350 mark we'll see how this settles out but definitely one of the most usable charmers period despite no waifu tax and finally a little bit of good news as all attention goes towards power of the elements Legendary Duel Season 3 has been getting a couple of cheaper prices. Things are calming down despite the short printing. Again, Magician Souls, grossly short, but people that ran to go get theirs got theirs. And now a couple more listers are there. But Bane and Gold, still very low on listings and starting to bump up on um, price. Again, do not delay on whatever version of card you want of these. I, in my opinion, having been shorted again pretty disgusting by konami and i want to clarify this is the first time konami has shorted in one of the 15 dollar side sets i'm seeing a lot of confusion despite me like putting comments in the comment section and answering people when i say that this is the first time with a 15 dollar product it's the hidden arsenal chapter one kind of product it's the dragons of legend product right those sorts of things we're seeing a short print of magician souls bane and gold souls has been shorted every single time it's been printed now is short and Battles of Legend. It was shorted in the original Legendary Duelist. But when it comes to the Seasons collections that are a $15 MSRP product, these products with dice, this is the first time. Millennium Ice Restrict, for example, was not shorted in this $15 product where it appeared secret rare. It was shorted originally in its Legendary Duelist debut, but not in the Seasons. So that is what's happening with these crazy prices over here. And one thing I would like to note, I think this will make for an insane collectible down the line should it not get reprinted for some time and it looks really good in secret rare mystical elf white lightning it goes with blue eyes collectibles it goes with manga collections and pages i just really like it but that's where my you know market brain can sometimes be wrong you're still rolling the dice on something like this or say dark magician girl i would think that dark magician girl and the color rare variants would be good pickups especially around two dollars 250 but right now the blue eyes white dragons out of legendary duel season two despite lds season two being way up in price versus what it debuted at those blue eyes are actually down in price even the blue blue eyes meme right like i think robbie was pushing that one where i was like no just go with the ultra well they're they're all down in price one second legendary duelist season two so this goes with the market men they're not always right, you know? So, yeah, this sealed, I did call this that it would be decent sealed long-term with Kaiba and Mai on the cover. I didn't think it would be good initially, so I was wrong there, too. But then as it came out, I was like, yo, you should be grabbing the sealed for this. I think it's obvious at this point, the hype and the reception there. But look, Blue Eyes doesn't make the front page, let alone when we go through its uh, first copy is going to be here. Ultra rare, market price just $2, and it even had a dip lower for a while. So, 
you've had plenty of speculation, people trying to juice it, and it's still just chilling out. So sometimes long-term can mean super long-term, as in five years down the line. I still think Blue Eyes is good super long-term out of this set. I think it'll be five at some point in its life. That doesn't mean that it will hit that, and people don't necessarily love this art of Blue Eyes, especially with you getting more SDK arts through Gold Series and stuff like that that were shorted, right? But I would think the Dark Magician Girl would be good. I think the Blue Eyes with Mystical Elf is good. Super long term but we'll see how those age thanks for watching today's market watch what do you think of everything going on between power of the elements insane hype nothing like this in the history of the market period like i cannot think of another moment where we've seen this much bubbling and hype like people were rabid for burst of destiny and it was good for the first two weeks even to bust and then it calmed down how do you see power of the elements going i know there's a ton of this set so many people have pre-ordered it the supply should really be up there but this this right now let's even refresh during market well, let's see let's see if we got a same lister please please nope nope the lowest throughout this entire video still a hundred four dollars man it's just crazy out there so again if you didn't already approach pre-sales don't don't get sucked in during sneak peeks and, and go with these insane prices people showing this do wait a little bit for week one competition and see how that's actually met the supply versus demand thanks for watching everybody